All right, in this section, we're going to be talking about compounds. More specifically, we're going to start with the question that I have at the top. It says, why form ions? In the last couple of sessions, we were taking atoms off the periodic table and forming them into ions by moving electrons around. Well, why do they do that? Why do they want to fulfill the octet rule? The answer is because they want to form compounds. Again, in this session, you're going to need that periodic table that we were filling out a while ago. Keep that handy because we're going to use that quite a bit. Let's start with sodium. And let's start with chlorine. Um, if you look at your periodic table, sodium is in column number one, and it is plus one. Chlorine is way over on the right-hand side, and it is in the negative one column. Now, a reminder, what this means is that plus one, that this guy threw away an electron, and this guy gained an electron. And so they became plus one and minus one to fulfill the octet rule and to be full. Now, why do they want to do that? Well, here is why. Whenever you have a sodium with a plus one charge and chlorine with a minus one charge, they're like magnets. A positive magnet and a negative magnet will be attracted to each other. It's sort of element love. They're attracted to each other, and sodium is going to be attracted to chlorine, and they'll be drawn to each other until they touch. This is what is called an ionic compound. An ionic compound. Why? Well, this is an ion, and this is an ion, and a compound is a coming together of two or more elements, so this is an ionic compound. Now, it's very important that you write this down. Star, all compounds equal zero. Their charges have to equal zero. Plus one and minus one equal zero, so this is the correct formula. Let's look at another example real quick. Calcium and oxygen. Calcium, if you look at your periodic table, is in the second column, so it's a plus two. Just to make sure everybody knows where I'm getting that, it's the charge I wrote on the column right there, plus two. Oxygen, on the other hand, is negative two. Well, they're going to be attracted to each other, and I'm going to get CaO as my compound. Do they equal zero? Plus two, minus two. Yes, they do. So this is the correct compound. Now, now that we've made a couple of them, let's talk about how they name them, because things have names, um, just like you have a name. And, and ladies, one of these days when they get married, their name's going to change. And so let's talk about how they name things. This isn't sodium chlorine, and this is not calcium oxygen. They have a name, and their name changes. Sodium is going to be the first name. One of these days, girls will get married, and the first name doesn't change, but their last name does. Chlorine, I'll just put the word here, chlorine, the ending changes, and it becomes I-D-E. It becomes sodium chloride. So whenever you hear the ending i it means it's a compound. So what would this one be called? Well, the first thing's still the same, calcium. And oxygen, cut off the gen, becomes I, so it becomes oxide, calcium oxide. Let's do a couple more real quick. Let's say that you have something like Al and P. Al is in the plus 3 column. I see a plus 3 on top of the chart that I wrote there. And phosphorus is in the minus 3 column. They're going to be attracted to each other. And Al and P are then, that's the compound that's formed. Do they equal 0? Plus 3 and minus 3 equals 0. Called aluminum, phosphorus becomes phosphorus. Now, you may put thought phosphoride, and that would be really close, and typically you would get that right. It's just called phosphide. You get used to hearing it being named. One more example. Let's say if we have something like magnesium, which is plus 2 on my chart, and sulfur, which is minus 2 on the chart. 
when they're attracted to each other, they became MGS called, first check the charges, that equals zero, magnesium sulfide. You'll notice that every single one of them, ide, ide, and all the other ones were ide. Reminder, plus three means gave away three, minus three means took in three. Gave away three, took in three. It was an exact match. Gave away two, took in two. Exact match. But that doesn't always happen. Sometimes it's not an even switching. Let me say one other thing quickly. Let's look at an example real quick of the original again, Na and Cl. Now listen to the words I use very carefully. If I told you you had a sodium atom and a chlorine atom, nothing will happen. Here's why. This guy's 11 protons, 11 electrons, neutral. 17 protons, 17 electrons, neutral. Does a neutral attract to a neutral? No, it won't. So nothing happens. It, that is why we form ions. When this guy throws away an electron and this one takes in an electron, then they are charged. This one becomes plus one. This one becomes a minus one. The word changes. It is an atom anymore. It becomes ions. Then they attract. That's really what a chemical reaction is. When you put a lot of sodium near a bunch of chlorine, what will happen is there's a movement of electrons from here to here. These are throwing away. These are taking in. Everybody's becoming charged and they become attracted. That's where you have smoke, fire, reactions take place. That is how you're going to have a compound, in this case, sodium chloride. But what happens if you don't have an equal match? Let's take something like calcium and chlorine. If I told you that we're going to be having ions, and for all the rest of these we're going to talk about ions, we have to look at the charges on the chart. Calcium is a plus two. Chlorine is a minus one. I'm getting the numbers again from the top of my chart. First, they are going to attract each other because they're positive and negative, but we had a star a while ago that said they have to equal zero. Do these equal zero? Plus two, minus one. Doesn't equal zero. So we have a problem. That means this guy is giving away two electrons. And I'll just draw like this for a second, just as a reminder of how it works. One electron will go there. Oh, that means there must be two electrons hanging around. One, uh, excuse me, two chlorines hanging around. One that would go here, and one that would go here. Would that be an even fix? Two electrons given off, one going here, one going here. Do they equal zero? Yes, they do. It takes one calcium with two chlorines, and now it works exactly. Right, now this shouldn't be a surprise to you because you've seen things like this with water. You have, sometimes you have numbers. All the ones we did before this right now, we didn't have numbers. They weren't needed. They exactly equaled zero. This one didn't, plus two, minus one. So something else had to change. Let me go ahead and give this a word. This is called a subscript. Subscript, that's what those little numbers are called. Sub means below, like a submarine goes below water. Script means writing, so that's writing below. So some of these are going to have numbers in them. Let's look at another one real quick. What happens, we'll just keep chlorine. What happens if you had aluminum and chlorine? Aluminum is plus three, chlorine minus one. If I get too far ahead of you, you may think about pausing the video and writing and catching back up with me. Is that an equal switching? Does that work out equal? Plus three minus one. No. I'm going to have a couple of more chlorines so that negative 3 equals positive 3. So how many aluminums did it take? It just took 1. How many chlorines did it take? 3 to equal each other. This one is called aluminum chloride. Now that may surprise you. Why doesn't it have why isn't it called aluminum trichloride? Very simply, the name doesn't tell you the numbers in it. The name tells you what elements are in it. Aluminum chlorine became chloride. 
You don't have to put the numbers in the name because anybody can look up and find the answer. Here's what I mean. Let's just turn it around for a second. Let's say I gave you aluminum chloride and I said, hey, tell me the formula. Well, aluminum means it's got AL. Chloride means it's chlorine. Look on my chart, plus 3, minus 1. Can I figure out the formula? Do those equal 0? Uh-uh. I need a couple of more of these to work out. Oh, it was 1 AL and 3 CLs. Look, I got the formula back. I don't need the name does not tell me the numbers inside. All right. One more. What happens if we have one like calcium and phosphorus? This one's tricky. Calcium has a plus 2 on the chart. Phosphorus is minus 3. Reminder, I'm getting the numbers straight off the chart that we wrote on there in the last session. Wow, that doesn't seem to work out very good. They're so close, not anywhere close to an even match. Plus 2 minus 3, how can I do that? Okay, what number do they both go into in math class? 2 and 3 both go into 6. To get 6, I bet that gives me 6. And that gives me negative 6. Plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, 4, 6. Minus 6. How many CAs did it take to work out? Three of them. Phosphorus? Two of them. Oh, so sometimes they'll have more than one number. Called calcium. I already know you know this one. Phosphide. Calcium. Phosphide. Notice one more time. The name does not tell me the numbers inside because anybody can look at their chart and figure it out. This is how you make very simple ionic compounds.